Welcome again to Flame of Truth. Uh, I'm Pastor Dan, uh, they call me, and uh, my Garden Grove Church down in Orange County. And I'm just blessed to be here with you, and uh, we're in the middle of an Old Testament series, going book by book and just trying to get the core themes of some of these great books. And we did Psalms last time, and now we're all the way, we're going to go to Jeremiah and just have some fun with one of these great prophets. Not easy. But anyway, before we get all the way into the heart and soul and meat of this book, we are blessed to have No Limits here again. And they're going to sing a great, great gospel song, Blessed Assurance. Enjoy this. I'm praising, I'm praising, I'm praising, I'm praising, I'm praising all the day long. Yeah. I'm praising, oh, I'm praising, whoa. I'm praising, I'm praising, I'm praising all the day long. From the going up to the going down I'm of the sun, I'll keep I'm on praising. praising. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Dun, 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 dun. 
Aren't they the best? I just love them. No limits from Soweto and outside Johannesburg in South Africa. You can go to the website. They're just terrific. I, I love them. No limits. Anyway, here we are in the book of Jeremiah. I wish I could come and do this in costume. I've done this in costume before. But let's just look at one of the great prophets in the Bible. You can imagine what it was like to be a prophet. I came out into my sanctuary and I just read the verse, Jeremiah 11, verse 18. The Lord made it known to me, thou didst show me all their evil deeds. And so in the character of Jeremiah, I just said, I know. I know what you've done. I see everything you've ever done. I see, I see the songs you put on your iPod without paying for them. I see those times that you say something in a little different tone of voice than you probably should. I see where you've broken the Sabbath. I see where you haven't paid all the tithes and offerings. Maybe you should. I see it all. My video cameras laser through all the darkest uh, walls, through the darkest nights. I can see everything. I'm a prophet. <laughs> How does that feel? Jeremiah was a prophet. God tells him everything. You think about the call of Jeremiah. It's one of the famous passages here in Jeremiah chapter 1. I've spoken on this to young pastors all over the world where Jeremiah comes and hears God's phone call to him. I want you to be a prophet and I'm going to put my words in your mouth. You think what that means. Jeremiah tried to say, I'm too young. I'm not... I'm not. I'm too small. I don't matter in the world. You can't choose me. Choose someone else. No, I choose you. And I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Before I formed you in the womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And he reached down and he touched my mouth. And he said, don't be afraid. Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you. Great, great, great promise. That God would put his word in Jeremiah's mouth and protect him. Well, then he began to give Jeremiah messages. Told him to go down to the marketplace and shout them out. <laughs> Hasn't told me yet. Ah, it's easy to stand here in a studio and uh, speak all over the world on uh, LOBN. Jeremiah had to go down to the marketplace, and God gives him a message, and Jeremiah says, I'm not saying that. You want me to say that? That's crazy. They're going to kill me. I can't say that. No, that's what I want you to say. I called you. You're work for me now. I put my words in your mouth. Say it. Difficult. Difficult. Other religions promise things. One religion promises nirvana. If you'll just do what the religion says, nirvana, bliss. Another religion promises 73 virgins. Not Jeremiah. He gets the promise. If you don't do right, I'm going to send the Babylonians in to destroy you. That's the message you want me to give? I don't want to say that. This is not an auction where you get to sell things and take it, give it to the highest bidder. You get to go to the marketplace and say, you better straighten up or I'm sending the Babylonians. Not easy. And he didn't allow Jeremiah to uh, do it quiet, just drop it in the mail and send it off. Can't just drop by at night and stick it under the door of the king. In the marketplace, straight to the face of the king. Difficult. I will send four kinds of destroyers against them. I will send the sword to kill, the dogs to drag away, the vultures to devour, and the wild animals to finish up what is left. Jeremiah 15, verse 4, I will make my people an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. I, I can't bear to read all of this to you. It's just, it's just too painful. Jeremiah, biggest book of the Bible, and he gets whipped and thrown in jail for giving this message 
not easy to be a prophet of God. What does it mean about the character of God? That God can want to say these kinds of things to his people. There's got to be another way. Sometimes you get wonderful things. Jeremiah 31, 3. Behold, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. How do you balance that with his other messages? It's angry, raging God. I'm going to do this to you. How do we match this all into one common God? He's going to destroy everybody. He's going to make everybody widows, burn everybody up. Well, there's only so many choices. One, maybe what we uh, read as being the voice of God is really Satan. And somewhere the prophet got it confused. And that's the voice of Satan, not the voice of God. Or another option is a very liberal position is that God, God is evolving. God is uh, processing, processing. It's a process theology at an extreme. That God is, uh, sort of starts at a more primitive, uh, sub-Christian level. And he's figuring it out as he goes, as he learns, he tries out different things. And God is uh, sort of growing up along the way. And eventually, eventually we'll have God, uh, the God of Jesus and the God of Christmas and Easter and, and that kind of God. Or uh, some have suggested perhaps it's just the way it is. God is a complex God. And he has one streak that is loving and kind and, and Christmas and Easter. And then we also have this God, the hard side, the tough love side of God that has some justice and vengeance in Jeremiah. And Jeremiah just ended up being the prophet for that side of God. Or there's a fourth option that uh, has been suggested, is that there is an ideal. There is an ideal. God would like to speak in words of love and kindness and truth and logic. And that is who he really is. That is the core characteristic of God. But he also has the, the whatever it takes. There's the ideal, but there's also whatever it takes. If that's not going to work, then I'll shout from the top of Mount Sinai, thunder and lightning. I'll use Jeremiah's. I'll use whatever it takes to bring people to me. Whatever it takes. There are times that he uses killing lambs. There's times he shouts from the top of a mountain. There's times he has Abraham almost sacrifice his own son. And there are just some really hard times. Ananias and Sapphira killed for not to giving a proper offering. And we have to wrestle with this. God tried being obvious. He tried the Shekinah glory. He tried fire hurling down from heaven with Elijah. Other times he tries a still small voice. Whatever will work. Judges railing out. And this time he tries Jeremiah giving prophecies. And what we'd call the gloom and doom prophets. Going to try shock. Therapy, if that's what it takes. Let's just shock them. Going to do this to you. A hard God with heartbreak. He said, I don't know what else to do to wake these people up. I've tried everything else. He's tried them all. And so he says, if you don't stop adultery, if you don't stop doing all of these things and sacrificing to my enemies, the sacrifices to Baal, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to burn you up. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to bring in the Babylonians. I am going to do this to you. That's what it takes. I hate it. It's not me. And one uh, writer says, God is not speaking to eagles. He is speaking to chickens and pigeons. God's doing the best he can. doesn't want to talk this way. What do you and I need? Do you and I need, we hear the still small voice, or do you and I need some Jeremiah's in our lives? Once in a while, we need Jeremiah. What are you going to do? One of the best answers that I know that really comes from uh, Abraham Heschel and the prophets is the idea that, that the prophets know the dream. The prophets live in the real world, but they also live in God's world. And they know from God what the dream is supposed to be like. A group of people from all over the world coming from north and south and east and west who all worship God and who all love each other and are serving each other and they take care of all the poor and, and they live out their conscience with justice. God knows the dream. The prophets know what the dream. They know the song is supposed to sound like this. And when the song sounds so bad, 
They're, the, they're prophets. <clears throat> it's supposed to be like this. This is what it's supposed to sound like. This song's not supposed to sound like this. You've gone to a kindergarten Christmas song, and they take these grand Christmas carols, and it's not in tune, and it's not quite right, and you love them, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. And it just grates on your soul. The prophet just, they're so in tune with the heart of God that they just can't help it. This is far below where it's supposed to be. The song is supposed to sound like this, not like this. How can you pass up the dream? God has this dream for you, not someday, but now. How can you pass it up? You're cheating yourself of the dream. That's why the prophets have this gloom and doom. We have this adultery theme. God is a lover. And he just can't stand it when people are falling in love with someone else. And he just says, I, I love you. I've done everything for you. I've given my life for you. I gave you gifts. I gave you jewels. I gave you everything. And I saw you making love with him over under the tree. How could you do that? Heartbreaking to God. So God in the prophets is just trying to find a way to touch people's hearts and bring them back to him. And the more you're a prophet with God and the more you have a heart for God and the more you begin to see things God's way, the more horrified you're going to be. It may be at the beginning you just see the big cosmic uh, colossal sins and that breaks your heart. But gradually the more you know the heart of God, you see the pride and the jealousy and the hypocrisy and all the rest and you just are horrified because your mind and heart have begun to live in the heart and rhythm of God. And you know the dream. Too bad. What about uh, hypocrisy? God just hates hypocrisy when people are like this and they should say that they're like this and they're not living it up to it. And he says in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 9, Will you steal and murder, commit adultery, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods? And then come and stand before me in my house and say, we are safe. Are you going to do that? Live like this and then come and say, we're okay. We're okay. There's nothing wrong with us. God just can't stand it. It's what he hates in Revelation 3 where it says, you are lukewarm. I'd rather you know who you are, admit who you are. That I can deal with. Hypocrisy, one of the great sins to the prophets and to God. Now we... We begin to come down to this, though, that the last word is always grace. We must always uh, not just uh, have the gloom and doom from the prophet, but God is a God of grace, and he gives Jeremiah some of the best verses of grace. Jeremiah 3, verse 12, Oh, go and say these words to Israel. O oh, Israel, my faithless people, come home to me again, for I am merciful, for I will not be angry with you forever. Chapter 9, verse 23, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom or the mighty man in his might or the rich man in his wealth. Let them boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who is just and righteous, whose love is unfailing, and that I delight in these things. That's who he really is. That's the ideal. He'll do whatever it takes, but that's the ideal. That's God. Keep the two separate. For I have plans for you, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, says the Lord. Plans for good and not for evil, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 13 and 14, you will seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you. And then the famous passage, chapter 31, verse 33. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts. I will be their God. They will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors nor their families, saying, you should follow the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, will already know me. That's the dream God wants. I want people to know me for what I really am, the ideal. I want them to know the song and the dream. The gloom and doom is not who God really is. It is God with emergency measures stooping down to talk to people where they are, to bring them to these great messages of grace. 
That's the dream. That's the last word. I will forgive wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. And so uh, Jeremiah would say, I have as much grace in my book as Paul and all the other grace verses. Don't count me out. I knew the true heart of God. There are, uh, there are some people who get a hard assignment. Maybe you have had a hard assignment. And Jeremiah had a tough time. They threw stuff at him. They gave him threats. He got whipped. He got thrown in jail. He had his hands and feet in stocks. Out where everyone could see him, not hiding. hiding. I tried. Jeremiah would say, I tried to make God's words clear. Look what happened. Look what happened. I tried to tell him, these are not my words. Why are you mad at me? What are you doing to me? I, these are God's words. If you want to be mad, get mad at him. No, God, I'll put my words in your mouth. They punished, they punished Jeremiah. There was only gloom and doom. Jeremiah doesn't have record of any miracles. Nothing exciting. No axe heads floating to the top of the water. No Red Seas. No uh, Moses got to do miracles. Elijah got to have fire come down from heaven. Jeremiah gets only gloom and doom. Not easy. No Pentecost. No 3,000 baptisms. Why couldn't, uh, I can hear Jeremiah say, why can't there be a prophet like Oprah? You get a car, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. Just, you're giving out cars. Why does he have to be, you better straighten up or I'm sending the Babylonians after you. But that's what Jeremiah's turn was. Jeremiah says he was tempted to quit. He says, I cursed the day I was born. There were times he wanted to just bottle it all up and say, I'm not going to talk for you this way. But he said he couldn't. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. His word in my heart was like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. He just couldn't let it out. Once God put the prophetic word in him, I put my word in your mouth, it had to come out. Even if it was hard. He had a hard assignment. And then finally comes the time in chapter 38 when he said that everyone who was stayed in Jerusalem was going to die. And they finally said, we've had enough of this prophet. Let's shut this prophet up once and for all. And they put him down in a pit. And then you know the story of Ebed Melech who came and got soft ropes and put rags under his arms so they could pull him out of the pit. Not easy to be a prophet for God. He got one of the hard assignments to not get the miracles, to not get the loving gospel all the time. He got a tough assignment. What God needed him to do at that time in that place. But he didn't quit. He didn't quit. Didn't get much thanks. Not much honor. He's not in Hebrews 11. He's not in the giants of faith. But he didn't quit. My words in your mouth, he spoke it clear to the end. Maybe you have a hard assignment. Maybe you feel your situation is not easy. Other people seem to have it easier. They get to do the upfront thing. They get to do things that get honored and get, uh, get glory. And you have a hard assignment in a hard place and a hard time. Don't quit. And I think if Jeremiah was here today, he would say, I wouldn't trade a thing. I got to be the voice of God. I got to feel the words of God in my heart and my soul. I got to do that. I got to be with God and to see the dream. I got to hear the song straight from God. Yes, I had some hard things, but I got to give the grace messages too. I wouldn't trade a thing. And you think about Jesus. Jesus had an easy assignment. He came down. He was put in a pit. He was mocked. They were going to throw him off a cliff. He was beaten. He was whipped. He was tortured. Jeremiah got to feel what Jesus got to feel. There are some really hard assignments, and Jesus was tempted to quit, but he didn't quit. Aren't you thankful he didn't quit? Stayed to the end. God's word in his mouth. And I just wanted to think about this before we're done. It's just me and you here. I don't have a congregation here. But you think what Jeremiah deserves. Someday we're going to get to heaven, I think. And God is going to begin to call the giants onto the stage. Abraham, David, Moses, I hope Daniel. And we'll cheer each one, standing ovation for each one. <clears throat> and then will come Jeremiah. <clears throat> 
who got one of the toughest assignments for God in history. The only time we put my words in your mouth, in the marketplace, condemning sin, got to do not one miracle in the whole time, and didn't quit. Didn't quit. Stayed with a hard assignment and stayed with it until the end. And all of heaven is going to stand and cheer. A prophet who kept his word, who did not ask for that assignment, would have traded any other assignment. But God said, I'm going to, this is what I need you to do at this time, and was faithful to that assignment and spoke for God. Whatever came in, if it was grace, he gave grace. If it was hard, it was hard. Whatever it was in the marketplace, he didn't slide it under the door. He said it to the people. And he was the voice of God and has this largest book in the Bible. And all of heaven is going to cheer that Jeremiah, who didn't quit with a hard assignment. I wish you and I could stand and give, give Jeremiah a standing ovation right now. He's asleep waiting for the resurrection. But maybe God would make a video of it and just show him to know how much the rest of us enjoyed this book. Don't pass by the prophets because they know the dream and they were faithful. And I just want to challenge you, wherever you are in the world today, if God has given you a hard message, a hard place, a hard assignment, it's not easy to serve God where he's assigned you. You're teaching children down in the children's division. You're washing clothes for the community services. You're out on some mission station somewhere in the world. Don't quit. Don't quit. It's worth it. And someday the standing ovation will come to you as it will come to Jeremiah.